So what I want to do is make a purple heart bowl that has a chevron pattern running through it. And I made up a plan that has the exact number of segments per ring and the length of segments that I need per ring. And I'm going to need four different rings, not including the base. And the third one is going to be the one with the chevron pattern. To start, I'm working on the first ring. I'm ripping the purple heart down to the thickness of the wall that I want to fit the curvature of the bowl. It just happens that it's three inches wide. Now I can set my miter gauge to 15 degrees so that I can cut the 12 segments out. Now I can glue the 12 segments into a ring. I found that for me, the best technique was to take one of the segments, dunk both ends into a thing of glue, and spread it around with my fingers. Then I could put it back into the place that it came out of. I'm gluing the rings in two different halves and using shims to compensate for the air in the angle. It's not very much, but it's noticeable. Now I can move on to the second ring, and I need to rip the purple heart. For this ring, I need to rip the purple heart down to two inches wide. Now I can cross cut the segments at 3 and 3 sixteenths wide. This will give me a diameter of 12 inches. And I can cut them and they go together. Now they can get glued up. and I can tighten the hose clamp. And I can wipe away the glue. And I can leave the second ring to dry. Once the glue's all dry, I can take it out of the clamp and bring it over a disc sander so that I can make the, par the edges parallel and I can get a better joint in the middle. After sanding, I can put glue on both halves and clamp the two halves together. The sanding makes it so that the two joints are parallel to each other and they will have a perfect seam between them. Once the two halves are dry, I can bring it back over the disc sander and sand both of the faces so that they are flat and can have a joint between the two rings. With those rings flat, I can move on to the ring with the chevron pattern. I have a nice piece of jatoba that I'm going to use as the zigzag part. I want the zigzag pattern to be a quarter of an inch wide, so I'm resawing the jatoba to that. Bordering the jatoba, I want to have a walnut veneer going along it. So right now, I'm cutting that down to the width that I need, and then I can resaw it to an eighth of an inch.
I can laminate those three pieces of wood together, going walnut, then jatoba, and then more walnut on top. And then I can clamp them together and let them dry. go outside the chevron pattern, I want maple, so I'm ripping that down to width. And then I can laminate the maple and the sandwich of jatoba and walnut and then another piece of maple to get me the strip that I need to make the chevron pattern. and the clamps can go on. Once the glue is dry, I can take off the clamps and bring it to my bench and use my hand plane to smooth it out. This way, I can run it on my table saw cleanly and safely to truly square up the edges. So the plan is to make a chevron pattern going around the bowl. But instead of just ripping this at an angle and using end grain, I want to make it so that all the grain is going in the same direction. So what I'm going to do is first cross cut here and here, which is about a 20 degree angle. And then once I have that, I'll be able to cut here and here. And that will give me my chevron pattern so that this is the new pattern. That would be the segment. Then after that, I can cut I can cross cut right here and here to get my angle that I need for 18 segments. I can make the first cut to start on what will become the chevron pattern. With those cuts made, I can move on to my next cut, which changes the shape of this piece from a rhombus to a square. You can see that that piece that, I got, cut, that got cut off kicks back a lot and sometimes gets stuck, so I just took it nice and slow, making sure to use a clamp every time I could to save my fingers from getting close to the blade. After those two series of cuts, I have the chevron pattern. So now I'm going to cut on an angle so that all the pieces can fit together. The angle will be 10 degrees because I'm doing an 18 segmented ring. For an 18 segment ring, I want to set my miter gauge to 10 degrees and then I can make those cuts which will give me the angle to make the ring. These small pieces were kicking back a lot so I had to stand to the side and make sure I didn't get hit. With the angles cut I can now glue up. After the glue is dry, I can sand both faces flat. So for the bottom ring, I need to have a 6 inch diameter, so a 3 inch radius. I'm going to do 4 segments, so all of the segments line up at the same point in the center, and that means a 45 degree angle. So instead of going long ways, I'm just going to cross cut at 5 inches here 
and then cross cut again, or we'll rip at five inches. Then what I'll do is cut the piece in half. And then after that, I will cut the segments across like that. And this, these are going to be the outside faces right here. So I need to make sure that these are square and that right here is square. After rough cutting the piece of purple heart to a rough, uh, rough length, I can clean up the edge on the table saw and then flip it around and make the piece square. Now I can move on to what was one of the most scary and sketchy cuts of this whole thing. I had to resaw the square of Purple Heart into half. It was scary, but it went okay. Now I can draw on the diagonal to find where I have to cut, and then I can cut it out on the bandsaw. This cut doesn't have to be perfect. Now I can flip those pieces around so the cuts are on the outside, and glue them to two halves, and tighten them with the hose clamp. So I glued the bottom layer of the bowl to three pieces of plywood so I can attach the faceplate in without damaging the bottom of the bowl. Now I'm going to just turn it around so that it's more steady and then I will glue on the next ring. I found the best way to do this was using my square carbide cutter to use the corner and take off the material that way. Now what I'm doing is flattening out the face of the bottom ring so that I can attach the next one. I found the best way to put glue on was just with my hands and just smearing it around. It was pretty messy but it worked well. Now what I did for clamping was I used the tailstock to push pressure against the ring and steady it and then I clamped it together and then I could true up the blank I'm giving each ring its general shape before putting on the next one that way the lathe won't be too burdened with the heavy load and I'll be ab I am able to take off some more of the material quicker With the outside closer to its finished shape, I can move on to the inside. I'm just using the same technique with the square carbide cutter. Now it was getting cold in the shop, so I had to move my gluing inside, and I'm using a different method. I would balance a piece of wood on the faceplate and then clamp it to the ring. Now I can just true that ring up again. I got it pretty centered, but it was a little bit off, so I'm just doing that now. Up, and then I can bring it down to the closer shape that I want. And the shavings were flying. Now with the outside chewed up I can move on to the inside in the same fashion that I did the other ring. Between the purple heart and the maple of the chevron pattern, I want a bit of a transition. So I took some or a walnut veneer about an eighth of an inch and I made a ring out of that and I'm going to put that between the maple and the purple heart on both top and bottom of the chevron pattern. And instead of clamps, I'm just using weights to clamp it. With the walnut ring all dry, I can go ahead and glue the chevron pattern ring on. This ring I didn't get exactly centered, so I would have to true it up a little longer. But it worked out well, especially since the maple is a lot softer than the purple heart, so it was pretty easy going, which was a nice relief from the hard purple heart. And then I could clean up the inside and get it more to where the shape I want.
Now I can glue on my final ring of purple heart. In between this I had a piece or a ring of walnut but I did not show that. And just using the same technique as before, clamping the ring to the bowl with a piece of wood on top to stabilize it. Then I can let it sit overnight and the clamps can come off. The original plan was to just make a smooth curve up to the top and not have any flare or anything. But as I was turning it round and turning it down to the shape I needed, I started to see the bowl a different way and see the bowl with a flare at the top and a little dip in where the chevron pattern is. And that's what I'm doing now. Now at this point I had gotten a bowl gouge. So I was able to use that to clean up the insides and reach deeper inside the bowl. For some reason, the circular carbide cutter kept getting caught on the sides, so I just stuck with the bull gouge. So in order to get the valleys and hills out that the bull gouge left, I'm going to just use a gooseneck scraper to scrape it. For the convex parts of the bowl, I was able to just use a card scraper. It's really all about finding that perfect angle where the shavings fly. And they stack up quickly. Now with sanding, I went 60, 80, 150, 220, 300. 600 then steel wool to finish I used four coats of shellac and then a coat of paste wax here I'm putting it on with a brush but I found that it leaves a lot of lines in it so after this coat I had to sand it off and I put it on with a clean rag and that seemed to work a lot better and it gave me the shine that I was looking for now after it's finished I can cut it off the waste block At this point, I'm not really confident enough to reverse mount the bowl after working on it for so long. I don't want it flying off, so I'm just sanding the bottom to make it flat. I like to put cork on the bottom because I feel that when you put it down, it gives a really nice soft put down. And with that, it's all finished up. And this is how it turned out. This project was a lot of fun to work on. It presented a bunch of different challenges that were fun to face and overcome. I'm definitely glad that I went with the continuous grain pattern in the chevron pattern. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.